What's going on, dudes? Drucifer back here with more goddamn metal for your asses. And here we are with a fucking Mount Rushmore. Another one, man. I did a Mount Rushmore of war metal. I did a Mount Rushmore of death metal. Now I'm here to talk about some fucking thrash. Hell yeah. So let's get into it, man. Again, these are going to be four picks. Uh, I would say most of these definitely fit into my fucking favorites. But they also have an old school element where I think they you can really make an argument that they helped influence the fuck out of the genre in one way or another. And uh, are all around just fucking great goddamn releases. These are not all debut releases. Uh, two of these are debuts. But uh, two of them are not. In fact, the first two are not. One of them is going to be totally obvious. I think the other ones, you probably might guess the bands because I've referenced them and mentioned them quite a bit. But the particular releases that I decided to throw out, look man, these Mount Rushmore videos, they're more about the bands than the releases. A lot of the releases I'm throwing out, I throw out because they just tend to be personal favorites for me. And I also think that they kind of fit into quality old school goodness. And in the case of a couple of these albums, I'll get to them uh, whenever I come across them. One of the main reasons I've chose these albums is because I like shining a little bit of light on albums that don't get, you know, looked at and get all the fucking praise whereas other albums are more popular. Though, in a lot of cases, the hype is there for a fucking reason. We're going to get into that, man. So let's kick this bitch off with number one on the list, but again, this is in no particular order. So the first one I got here on my Mount Rushmore thrash metal is Slayer's Rain and Blood. Yeah, pretty obvious, not too much of a shocker there, man, but again, sometimes an album, it just lives up to the hype, and in the case of Rain and Blood, this is at the root of my extreme metal addiction. This is the first album I ever heard by Slayer. I still remember the first time I heard it, and I was just like, I wasn't ready for it. I was like, dude, it's just too fast it's just like silly fast how fucking fast that album is but then listening to it again over like the next couple of months this is back when i was first getting into metal I, it just like once it hit me i was like fuck and once i got into slayer it just kicked all the fucking doors open for extreme metal you know other thrash bands especially death metal death thrash i was huge and still am you know black and speed metal and shit like that but uh top tracks for this one man this is hard but jesus saves Angel of Death, obviously, Altar of Sacrifice, Postmortem, just all-out aggression, a pure fucking thrash assault from start to finish. Hands down, for me, has always been the best of the big four American thrash bands. Second would be Megadeth, but it is silly. I think it, nowadays, especially, it is an even further. Like, as more time goes by, the more of a distant second Megadeth even becomes to Slayer, man. Slayer is just hands down... What they did for thrash and you know just metal and extreme metal in general, I don't think it really be understated, man. Uh, Show No Mercy would have been a good pick here. Uh, fucking Hell Awaits is great, but the Rain and Blood w is just so fucking good. It's so raw. It's right to the point. Everything sounds tight, focused, aggressive, and just fucking fierce, man. So Slayer's Rain and Blood right off the bat. <laughs> Second on my list here, I have Sodom, and for the album I have chosen for this, I've chosen Better Off Dead. Yeah, I've mentioned several times, In the Sign of Evil is my personal favorite release from Sodom. Uh, yeah, I've mentioned that. I think every time I talk about Sodom, I mention that. And, but I am, I've also said I'm pretty much a fan of every one of their albums that have come out. And while Agent Orange is a very close one for this list, uh, at first I had Agent Orange on here. Uh, Better Off Dead, it just, it has a few of my favorite tracks from the band, uh, An Eye for an Eye, which is a total thrash classic in my opinion, where Angel Ripper is just screaming at the godless guys as to why do, why does injustice keep happening in the fucking world and the perpetrators get away with it. Shellfire Defense has to be one of my favorite thrash riffs of all fucking time. The song is the law, it's a little bit cheesy, I can understand why people think that, but I can't hear that song without thinking of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Never Healing Wound, the title track, Better Off Dead, Stalin Orville. It's all good shit, man. And again, this is an album that I just feel like gets overlooked a lot. It's uh, it's really fucking underrated. Agent Orange gets a lot of the press. Persecution Mania in the Sign of Evil, obviously. But uh, Better Off Dead is a fantastic fucking album, man. If you haven't listened to it in a while, put it on and just fucking jam it, man. Even their tank cover is really good. Just everything on here is great I, I don't understand why people tap out on sodom after persecution mania maybe 
Uh, some people will go up to Agent Orange and they're like, yeah, the hell with it after that. I don't understand because I love all of it, man. I think all that shit is fucking great. So Sodom, better off dead. The third one I have on here is Creator. And the album I have chosen is Endless Pain. Now, Creator's most popular album has to be Pleasure to Kill, and if you were to say Pleasure to Kill, I would not argue one bit. That is a great fucking album, dude. That thing is goddamn fierce. But there's something about the straight-up rawness of Creator's debut album, Endless Pain, that has just always stuck with me. It's always been like, it feels very much like a meat and potatoes uh, fucking thrash album. And like Sodom's Better Off Dead, though to a lesser extent, I think Endless Pain gets to gets a bit overshadowed by Pleasure to Kill. And again, that's to take nothing away from Pleasure to Kill. It is a fucking master class of a goddamn thrash album. But I, again, like shining a little bit of spotlight on albums that I think are just as good, but maybe lesser known or lesser appreciated. So I've chosen Endless Pain here, and tracks for this one, Total Death, Tormentor, Bone Breaker, Flag of Fucking Hate, man. Just put this motherfucker on and blast it. If you guys are not familiar with the Tormentor demos, I would recommend checking those out as well, but this thing, this is, I mean, not just because it's their debut album, but this really is creator's kill them all. It just has that kind of a, you know, a four guys in the fucking studio making noise. It has that kind of a vibe to it, whereas Pleasure to Kill is, I would say, probably more aggressive, more intense, and maybe even more focused and fierce in that sense. That's why it's also a great choice if anybody wanted to choose that one, but it is a bit more... I don't know if I would say contrived than this one is. This one just sounds like a bunch of dudes going in, playing more speed metal, whereas Pleasure to Kill is a bit more maybe like sort of death thrash. Both great fucking albums. Either one I would take, man. Uh, Pleasure to Kill was originally on here first, but then I was like, you know what? Endless Pain needs a little bit more love than it gets. I fucking love that album. So there you go. Creators, Endless Pain. And to complete my Mount Rushmore, this is one of the probably lesser influential bands on this list, but fucking phenomenal nonetheless, and again, just goddamn underrated, Whiplash, Power and Pain. This album is so fucking good, I just cannot not put it on a Mount Rushmore list. This thing just needs way more fucking love and attention, man, because there's a lot of good fucking thrash out there. But Whiplash's debut album, Power and Pain, is insanely underrated in the thrash and speed metal realms. I think here maybe in the last even five, maybe ten years or so, it's starting to get, to get a little bit more recognition and a little bit more credit. But being released back in 1986, which is prime time for thrash time, and the shit was still pretty fresh at the time, and cool things were being done, and this fucking thing comes out and just holds up like a motherfucker. I like the first three. The first two, I think, are fucking great, and Power and Pain is just phenomenal, man. It is just right up, stepping up to the plate, first fucking swing, knocking it out of the goddamn park. Tracks like Power Thrashing, Death, Spit on Your Grave, Nailed to the Cross, Warmonger, which is my personal favorite if I have to narrow it down. Just all around a phenomenal record, man. If you guys have not checked out Whiplash, do yourself a favor. If you're into thrash, speed metal, if you like the big four, if you like fucking Exodus, Overkill, any of those kinds of bands, definitely check out Whiplash's Power and Pain. It's a very aggressive album, very fast, um, it just fucking catchy ass songs, just a great goddamn album all around. But there is my Mount Rushmore of thrash metal, and there is so much thrash that I love. Uh, if you would go watch my six essential thrash metal albums that one was a bit more album based though there are things on that that i would change now it's just how this thing goes man you give your opinion on something come back in a couple years and be like oh i can't believe i forgot that or man i would have swapped that out i think i have megadeth's rust in peace on that six essentials and even within the albums megadeth has released i would take peace cells over rust in peace now um why I didn't then, I don't know. I mean, I, I do love Rust in Peace. Uh, Marty Friedman, I think, is fucking great. But when it comes to actual thrash, I think Peace Sells is the better album. But there's all kinds of other shit that I would have added on there, too. I know I added uh, Toxic Holocaust, Evil Army. Both of those bands are great. If, you know, if there were more faces on Mount Rushmore, they probably would have made it on here. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if there was like six or eight fucking faces on that goddamn mountain, what some of these lists would come out like. But I think this is a pretty fucking good Mount Rushmore of thrash list. Um, there's other stuff that's honorable mentions, even stuff that was on the six essential albums. 
that would probably make this. If somebody was to say Metallica Kill Em All, I, I wouldn't blame you. That was a hugely influential album. But for these, these are bands that I think were really influential for the genre. These are releases that I think are some of their best releases. And I think it fucking works out, man. The Mount Rushmore lists are a, a little bit of the fucking inspirational bands, a little bit of the fucking old school classics, and just a little bit of your own personal fucking favorites. Because, I mean, who the hell put fucking Theodore Roosevelt on the mountain, on fucking Mount Rushmore with Thomas Jefferson and George Washington? Why was Teddy Roosevelt on there? He'd been president for like, what, like 10, 15 years earlier or something? But they put him up there. Why? Because somebody fucking liked him. And probably because he's the guy that was behind the fucking national parks and probably is one of the reasons that fucking thing got done in the first place. I don't know. Anyways, that's it for this one, guys. The only other thing I have for you is I've just worked with some artwork with Barry over at that Goat Metal show. And finally, we have Iron Casket fucking t-shirts, man. Two-siders. Got the fucking badass big logo on the front and on the back. Let the blade and bullet divide the weak from strong hell. Goddamn, yeah, that's a lyric off some of the new Iron Casket material. But that thing, uh, the link is in the description. It is going to be up on eBay if anybody wants to buy it. Of course, double-sided, it does cost a little bit more, but I kind of was selfish, man. I really want that fucking thing for myself. Anyways, that'll be up. And also, Drusifer Channel shirts are still available if anybody is interested. That is also linked in the description. You can buy it off of eBay. Free fucking shipping, man. Anywhere in the goddamn world, any size you want. But anyways, that's all I got for this one, dudes. Till the next one, keep it goddamn heavy. Keep it fucking mean and offensive. Crush all posers. Take no prisoners. Take no goddamn shit. And I will see all you sons of bitches in the next one. Later.